Hi guys! We are here again, um, this time not in Petaluma, but we are in Vallejo, the beautiful city of Vallejo, um, California. And in about a few minutes, we're going to start the worship service and we're going to be training um, healing workers, pastors, and anyone who desires to be to learn about uh, how we can pray effectively for those struggling with any kind of illness. And uh, last week, I think we we touched just um, a little bit about loneliness and depression, and we feel like we barely scratched the surface about loneliness and you know how God feels about us when we feel lonely. Um, I was reviewing the hierarchy of human needs. We call it if you are familiar with your psychology or it, it, it talks about the the hierarchy of human needs from Maslow's point of view and one is that um, the need for belongingness the need for acceptance and once human beings are deprived of that need then emotional pain emotional problems follow and but not only that it also affects our physical health and uh, another thing that um, I have realized is there's a lot of study that shows too that um, loneliness is also linked to development of addiction. Um, it's so interesting that there is one experiment where um, they put this rat in a single cage and uh, the rat was given an option of just um, drinking purely water and a water coated with cocaine. And uh, you see what happened? The, the rat preferably chose water um, mixed with cocaine and uh, left alone, um, the rat uh, eventually died. And then another experiment is that they put these rats in group cages. You know, they're in a group and they were given a lot of options like there's, there's toys, there's, um, they can play with other rats, but there's still the option of pure water and uh, water uh, mixed with cocaine. But interestingly, only 25% of the same rats um, chose um, the addictive um, water compared to 100% when they are alone in the cage. So I think um, the reason why lonely people get addicted um, to, to, to something, and I'm not just talking about drugs, it could be alcohol, nicotine, amphetamine, methamphetamine, cocaine, heroin, shopping, food, social media, uh, pornography, um, internet surfing is because it um, temporarily numbs um, our emotional pain. But here's the thing, too. the great question is, what makes us human beings to come to um, getting that intense pleasure that we are willing to forego our health? Like say for example, they found out that um, you know PET scans, it's an imaging um, of the brain that shows how the brain looks like with a normal individual and somebody who has was addicted to cocaine and they found out that those with addiction actually has um, low levels of D2 receptors in the frontal lobe of their brain and you know the D2 receptors or D2 dopamine receptors they are distributed in the frontal lobe of our brain that pretty much allow us to control our behavior control our cravings and make us um, choose the right decisions in life and uh, they found out that in addicted um, patients they have less of that that's why they succumb to compulsion you know that that intense desire to get that addictive behavior to stay in social media for hours and and just be alone themselves just to to kind of numb and silence the painful um, effect of loneliness one psychiatrist said that um, loneliness is the nucleus of psychiatry meaning to say that without loneliness pretty much we're not going to be needing any psychiatrist and any mental um, hospital there is but then here's the deal though let's go back to to somebody who really experienced the the most painful loneliness ever on earth and his name is Jesus in Isaiah 53 verse 3 it says that Jesus um, is acquainted with our grief and sorrows. He felt rejection 
you know, Jesus was not like, uh, looked like a superstar. He was rejected by his disciples. Even his best friend betrayed him. Judas betrayed him. Peter betrayed him. But then, can you imagine Jesus? He, when he came on earth, he said that he was without sin. Can you imagine growing up? feeling weird and left out because you are in a family your parents are sinful your siblings are sinful nobody believes you even his own brothers ridiculed him they told Jesus if you want to perform your great miracles go to go to um, Jerusalem don't stay in Nazareth and then even his own people it says that Jesus cannot even perform miracles in his own hometown because nobody believed him they were saying like, isn't it Jesus or playmate? We used to, to play together in a playground. Like, who, who are you claiming to be God? So Jesus know how it feels to be um, rejected. And see, it says in um, 2 Corinthians verse 5, 21, the apex or, or the climax of Jesus' loneliness was um, he was made sin. Him who knows no sin was made sin so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and here's the deal though in Hebrews it also says that we have a great high priest who was tempted in every ways yet without sin but then he knows how we feel because he's been there but not only that not only Jesus understands our loneliness he provided a way for us to experience joy by being a sin not just paying for our sin but by being a sin for us by dying on the cross um, yesterday I was um, inserting a peripheral IV on, on one of my patients and I'm not bragging about this if you're listening you know me <laughs> that um, I can honestly honestly say that I am very good in peripheral IV insertion so they called me but nobody else can and when I went there, I was about to insert an IV to a um, cocaine-addicted young gentleman. And I tell you, he's like, he's, he's out of it. He was dehydrated. I can't even um, speak to him. And for some reason, God brought me there to say a simple prayer to him. And I'm not sure if he understands me, but I lay hands on him. And I said, you know, you may not understand me, but there is this friend who believes in you. Who is a friend and you are not alone that he understands your weakness that he cares about you that even right now you feel alone isolated in this room of yours but Jesus is reaching out to you he's longing for you and trust me he started crying like I saw the tears in his eyes and I think at the core of the the addict is that longing for somebody to understand them um, come alongside them and say I understand you and I love you that's all they need they don't need any judgment or condemnation so I think as a church I want to encourage you that um, addicts don't need us to preach what to do and how to provide solution to their problem I feel like their greatest need from us the church is that loving kindness that will reassure them that we love them and they are accepted and that they belong so thank you guys. I want to call my friend Anne, my favorite preacher. I want to brag about my friend, that she's the greatest preacher. I want to hear about her preach because of her tender heart. And I know her Her words always suits um, any soul that, that needs encouragement. So Anne, uh, say something to our friends. We love you guys. Mwah. Hi, everyone. Um, we're so happy to be here tonight with you, and, and uh, thank you so much for, for joining in and being with us. And uh, just like Dr. Malou was saying tonight, we, we want to talk a little bit more about loneliness, uh, particularly in dealing with addiction. And you know, uh, I, I think that I, I love what Dr. Malou was saying, and, and uh, she hit the nail on the head. This is actually what I was going to share, so. <laughs> um, the fact that, you know what, we can be lonely. We can be lonely in a room full of people, and it can seem like, you know, uh, loneliness isn't just being in a, a place separate from everybody, but you can actually be with people 
and still be separated from them and, and feel lonely. Uh, you can feel lonely in your family. Uh, maybe you feel like your family, you just don't fit in your family. Uh, maybe you feel like uh, your family doesn't understand you. They don't understand how you think and feel about things, how you're passionate about certain things, and they can't relate to that. And so you can be lonely in your family because you feel like you just don't fit in your family. You can be lonely with your friends because maybe you feel like your friends don't understand you at that particular time. They don't get what you're going through. Maybe you're trying to reach out to them and they, uh, they just don't understand where you're at and what's going on with you. Um, loneliness is a real issue and it's an issue because we're not wired that way. We're wired for connecting and fellowshipping with one another, staying connected to one another. The Bible talks a lot about that. Where you know we're part of a body, we're really interconnected with one another. We're not in, in, independent; we're interdependent. And so that's just the way we're wired. And so to go against our basic wiring is to go against who we really are. And then that's when loneliness sets in, because we're going against who we really are when we isolate and when we're lonely. And of course, that's one of the greatest tools that the enemy uses against us is isolation, is loneliness, is that feeling that we're disconnected, that we're separated somehow from our, our loved ones, from our friends, from our coworkers, from our family, from people that we care about and we look towards. Uh, he loves to try to disconnect us because those connections form life. Those connections are very, very beneficial towards us and very meaningful to us. And they actually give us life. Uh, Carolyn Leaf will tell you that it, it, it rewires our brain. Anytime we're with somebody and we're talking, we're hanging out, we're just with someone, that it actually re rewires our brain. And so uh, we're made to be with people, connected to people. We're not made to be alone. And um, even grief, I wanted to kind of point, point uh, on this. A loss of a loved one, the grief that a person goes through, the sense of loss, um, can drive people to addictions. It's not uncommon for people to get hooked on pain kill, uh, killers, to get hooked on uh, uh, some form of antidepressants or alcohol, uh, to numb the pain, to numb the, the pain of loss, the grief of loss, to be left alone uh, and not know how to deal with their life now that their life has changed in, uh, in a direction that they hadn't planned for. And so it's not uncommon for even grief to lead to addiction. Um, but just like Dr. Malou was saying so well, you know, Jesus has felt what that feels like. You know, there's other people in the Bible that felt like it too. I'm thinking about Joseph, you know, when Joseph was explaining to his, his uh, family, his, his brothers, his own brothers, the, the dreams that he has about the future, his passion for the future and the dream about the future, his brothers couldn't relate to that. His brothers uh, were actually angry at him and, and misunderstood his intentions. And uh, they were very mean towards him. You know, they beat him up, they put him in a pit, uh, they imprisoned him there, and they wanted to let him just lay there by himself and just die, just die. But there was one brother that had a little bit of compassion on him and said, we can't do that. And so instead, they left him in the pit until uh, travelers could come by, and then they sold him as a slave. And um, so there is loneliness. It's weaving throughout the Bible. It's common. It's something that we feel in life. 
And it's a very powerful thing, a very, very powerful thing. Um, but just like Dr. Malou was saying, Jesus has that solution. You know, I'm thinking about the verse that says, we weep with those who weep. We mourn with those who mourn. We celebrate with those who celebrate. And I really believe that, why is God telling us to do that? He's telling us to do that because He does that. And we're to be like Him. And so, He's the one, just like Dr. Malou was saying in uh, last week, He's the one that sticks closer to us than our brother. He's the one that will never leave us, that we will never be alone, and that he will weep when we weep. He will, he will cry with us. He will mourn with us. He will celebrate with us. He will encourage us. He will support us. He will help us. Um, He's never going to leave us. Sometimes our pain isolates us from God and, and disconnects us from God. The pain gets in the way and we don't know how to approach God in our pain. But I want you to know that uh, he's a safe place to bring your pain to. He's the one that has the answers. If you look into the world, if you look towards alcohol as a solution to your pain, if you look towards shopping as a solution to your pain, if you look to food to be a comfort um, against your pain, if you look to any of these earthly resources, it's not going to provide you a lasting solution that's a healthy solution. It's only going to numb you for a second, but the pain will always be there waiting for you and coming back. And so, uh, Jesus is the only one that can provide a permanent healing and a permanent solution to loneliness and to addiction as a result of loneliness. And so um, we want to spend just a second now, we want to reset the camera and we'll be right back. <laughs> 